blacks and Latinos have destroyed themselves. See, that's Christianity. That's garbage. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Our people crying and march on the street. It's our job as teachers to let them know when they repent, to repent of their sins and boycott it. What does God require of you? That's what Christ said. You shall know the truth, meaning his laws, statutes, and commandments, and the truth shall make you free. That's what this whole ride is about. Christmas is going to be brought to naught. Thanksgiving brought to naught. Come on. Come on, read it again. We are here to let you know who the Sabbath is for. The Sabbath is not for having grace and the face of the heart. You so-called black, you Hispanic and you native, God give us the Sabbath. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. So you children of Israel, yes sister, you are from, you are, from, you are the children of Israel. I can see, you are no African. Who tell you that you are African? The people right here who enslave you. Come on, read it again. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. So God said, you, black, you Hispanic, you native, shall keep God's Sabbath. Come on. To observe the Sabbath. And you must observe it. Throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So when God said you must observe the Sabbath throughout the generation, what it mean? Don't stop. That's what it mean. Come on. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So now the Sabbath is a sign from Friday. When it dark, Saturday when it dark, it is a sign between the 12 tribes. You so-called black, you Hispanic, and you native. You make up the 12 tribes of Israel. God said it's a sign, the Sabbath, between us and him forever. So when they defy God's Sabbath, God said, you know what God said? Everyone that, everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. So now we're going to show you how God put people to death. On the Sabbath. Because you will define God's Sabbath. God said he's gonna put you to death. Give me that Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28, verse 6 to 1. Right. Also, every sickness and every blight which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So now, when you define God's Sabbath, God said, All the sickness he's gonna bring upon you until you have been destroyed. That's what God said. God said, all this sickness, you're breaking God's Sabbath system. Today is a Sabbath day. Of rest, you must keep it holy. Come on, read it again. More, it says, also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So now God said, he's going to bring all this sickness upon you until you be destroyed. When you have hate, the God bring that sickness upon you for violating Sabbath. This whole day, the new moon, they have a tournament. All these things we forget. We are here trying to let you know to return back to your custom. Celebrate on Christmas, worship on a Sunday. God never say that. Who tell you you must worship on Sunday? We are trying to let you know what God said. And when God brings the sickness upon you, we got a hand up. Come on, give me that, Sarah. You know what I want. When God brings all this sickness upon you, where your hand up? We're gonna show you. We're gonna show you where God said you got a hand up, man. God said you got a hand up when you break his Sabbath. When he bring all this sickness upon you for violating Sabbath. You are God said you gotta fall, man. Come on. 38 verse 15, man. So you finally got taught? God said, you gotta let you fall somewhere. Come on. Sirach 38, verse 15. Uh -huh. He that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the Yes. Let so him now. When you violate God's Sabbath, God said he's gonna bring all the sickness upon you. And when the sickness comes upon you, you violate God's Sabbath, who is your maker? The true God, the God of Israel. He's our maker. Come on. Let him fall into the hand of the physician. So now you violate God's Sabbath. 
God tell you you're going to bring all the sickness upon you. And when you bring all the sickness upon you, you're going to end up in the hospital. In the hands of the physician, God going to let you end up when you violate. Many of you going through this right now. Bring it again. It's rough. 38 verse 15. Uh -huh. He that sinneth before his maker, uh -huh. let him fall into the hand of the physician. God said he's going to fall into the hands of the physician. God said it, not us saying it. We're reading it to you because you don't want to read. You don't want to read. You don't want to know what's in the Bible. When the law started to come out, what you do? You started to run. You ask a question about your own life. What you do? How I assume, assume it back? While in life on stake. God said, when you violate his Sabbath, he's going to let you fall into the hands of the physician. That's what God said. Come on, read it again. He that sinneth before his maker, uh -huh. let him fall into the hand of the physician. Uh -huh. So now, give me that barrel, man. But give me that barrel. So if you want to have life, and you want to keep straight, walking, hear what God said, come on. Baruch 4 verse 1. Uh -huh. This is the book of the commandment of God. So now we are reading out of the book of the commandment of God. We are reading out Korean. We are reading out of the book of the dead. We're reading the book of the commandment of God. Come on. The, and the law that endureth forever. So God, Puff, you want to ask you a question, man? You don't want to hear? Read, read the book again. Let me see what we're reading out of. If we're reading out of a book, what? Your friend, your wife friend made up. Come on. This is the book of the commandments of God. So daddy, we're reading out of the book of the commandment of God. Come on. And the law that endureth forever. That's what, daddy. You don't want to be enough, grow your beard. You're running away from the book of the commandment of God. We are reading out of the book of the commandment of God. And these laws endure forever. Come on. All they that keep it shall come to life. So now, daddy, if you keep God's commandment, you shall come back to life. You got to know how to walk, man. Today is a Sabbath, man. You ain't keeping it. You're trying to tell me that you don't want to hear what coming out of the book of the commandment of God? Something wrong with your spirit, brother? But such as leave it. So when you leave God's commandment, daddy, come on. Shall die. God say you're going to die. God say you're going to die. Give me the proverb, man. Let me show you what daddy laying down in, man. God, this is no game. Give me that, man. Proverbs 26, 21. Come on. 21, verse 16. Yeah. Let me show you what daddy doing, man. You shall die if you leave God's commandment. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Come on. The man, the wandereth of the way of understanding. We out here bringing the understanding of God. Laws them to you. Black, you so-called black. You Hispanic, you native. God said what? The man, the wandereth out of the way of understanding. We try to bring the understanding to you. You wonder not of God's laws, sister? Come on. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's where you're gonna be, sister. That's where you be at right now. That's where you be. You're sinning against God, you're laying down in the congregation of the dead. That's what God said, man. Come on. Yeah. You in the congregation of the dead as well, because they tell you today, this month is supposed to be Black History Month. Every day of the year is Black History Month. The atrocities that we suffered here in this place. Every day is Black History Month. Right. Not just this month. Y'all crazy. Y'all people follow anything these people tell y'all. Y'all all the true Jews. Y'all all the people of the Bible. Y'all must wake up and realize who you are and what you got to do to get salvation. Right. That's why you dead. Come on. Give me that Romans, man. Let me show you. Romans 6.23. Come on. We are out here to rise you up. Put life in you. When you keep these laws, you're going to have life forever. Come on. Yes. Romans 6, verse 23. Yeah. For the wages of sin is death. Come on again. For the wages of you sin like is death. So now, oh can I ask a question, my brother? Just a question. Yeah, yeah, that's right, listen, listen, the God said, right? The wages of sin is death, right? Yeah. What give you life? He said the gift of God is eternal life. What give you life? You want to know what give you life, man? Let's stand up for one minute. Let's just listen. Don't, don't move. Right there. Give me what. what give Keep. me that. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give Proverbs 7, verse 2. 
keep my commandments and live. So, bro, if you want to have life forever, you have to keep God's commandments and live. That's right. That will make you have life forever. When you're in sin, like oh now, give me that. A woman must not wear what pertain to to a man. Give me that. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Let's listen good. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So now, we ain't gonna even buck up with it. Pants. If you wear pants forever, you're gonna what? Lay in the congregation of the dead, and the wage of that, the pay what you get for that, is straight death. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. That's all we are here doing. Bringing out God's laws to you, which is life. Come on, read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So God said, the woman, the woman, an Israelite woman, you so-called black, you Hispanic, you native. God said you must start wear pants. I don't care about the other nation, what they want to do. God don't care either. God made them for a purpose, to be your slave. And waster. That's what God made them for, son. My brother. Any way you want to take it, my brother, I want to speak to you, man. You don't want to hear? What to give you life? What to make you walk straight? Come on, give me it again. Yeah. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So now we are speaking to our Israelite sister. If God said you must not wear pants, that means that God have a dress code for you, right? So now we're going to see if God said you must not wear pants because in, in the Haitian days, no woman never used to wear pants until the feminine movements. Now we start to wear a lot of pants. Who tell you to wear it? You slave master. Come on, let me see. Come on, man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So now if the woman should not wear pants, boxes. Now we want to see what God set up for you, sisters. We got to see what God set up for you. Because what? This process in the church ain't teaching you that. This process in the church ain't telling us that today is a Sabbath day. The God Sabbath. Not the so-called Caucasian Sabbath. That's right. Sunday. Who tell us that? Who change it? We gotta see who change it. We gotta see who change it. When you give me that, give me that Roman. When you finish it. Come on. Eh? Sorry. I'm ready. First Timothy 2, <clears throat> verse 9. Come on. In like manner also. So now, if God said your sister must not wear pants, come over here, brother. I want to speak to you, man. You good? What is good? Stop. We want to know what is good. Because you, brother, you ought to use that word. You good? What is good? Come on, man. Read that. Romans 7, verse 12. We want to know what is good. Come Wherefore, on. the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. But this brother ain't keeping law one and talking about it good. Bro, you must stop use word, man. Stop use word and start to read. Give me that till I come, man. That's what we do. That's what we know when we say we're good, we know what we're talking about. First when Timothy say, 4. When we say we're good, hear why we say we're good. Because we read. Come on. Verse 13. Yeah. Till I come. God said till he come. That's what we're doing. Come Give on. attendance to reading. You don't read. You can't be talking about you good. And you don't know what is good. You don't know we're in the Bible to find out what is good That's because right. you don't believe in the Bible. You don't believe in, you believe in a headset and a cell phone, games and music. That's what you believe in. Read it again. Till I come. That's it. Till I come. Give yes. attendance to read. That's what we do. That's why we go here to correct you, to tell you what's gonna happen. God said we must come out here to warn you about the Sabbath. God said we come out here to correct you, the similar thing. Bro, brother, man, you don't want to speak? Yeah, I want to speak to you, man. Come on, read. Till I come. Till I come. God said, till I come. Give attendance to reading. And now God said, till I come, we must give attendance to reading. That's what we read. What we read? God telling us to come out here. When we read the Bible, God shows what we should come out here and give me an Ezekiel tree. So when we are just speaking and trying to have a conversation with you, brother, we are trying to ask you for a collector, we are trying to correct you, to see what they hit, to bring you back to life. That's what the Bible is all about, man. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 17. Let's listen good. My son, I have made thee a watchman. So now, God said, 
My son! My son! Don't read something, jump back to treatment. We're out here for the watchman of God. Come on. Yeah. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll. So now, till I come, God caused us to heat this roll, this Bible. Till I come, give attendance to reading. This is a roll. Because the Bible used to be a scroll, right? So now, God said, till I come, give attendance to reading. So we are here to warn you and tell you what God said. Come on. Cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll. So when we are filling our belly, because we have a good teacher who is teaching us. God, the Bible, can you just take it up and learn it by yourself? Somebody have to guide you. So when we have a good guide, and we taught, we come out here and what? We put more emphasis on it, to bring it out to you. Come on. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So now just because we're already in our mouth for honey for sweetness, we are going to just sit down with it. We're going to come out and spill it until you use so-called black and you spun it, man. Come on. And he said unto me. And he said unto me, he said, Son of man. Right. Go. Get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So now we are speaking. We are speaking to the children of Israel. Because your sister is the children of Israel. Your son, is that the son? Is the children of Israel. You understand that? But you are sister, you have a day to worship with your sister. Today, from Friday to Saturday. You understand that? Come on. So we hit the road. We are here to tell you what the fault you are. With God, come on. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. So God never sent us to the, 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 the Caucasian man. He never sent us to the Chinaman. Because they are their own God. We are the true God, the God of Israel. The one who take us out of the land of Egypt. Deliver us from the sea. He is the one. We are the people who God take us, man. That's right. You are here walking around like you don't know hope. We are here to bring hope. And of a whole language. But to the house of Israel. God never sent us to no people in our language. He sent us to you. Not to many people of a strange speech. Come on. And of an hard language whose words thou canst not understand. Because when we're speaking, we're speaking the same language. We're speaking the same language for you to understand. We're speaking a Creole. Because we don't know no Creole. We're speaking no, no Homeric. We're speaking no Greek. No, no Latin. We're speaking English. Come on. Whose words thou canst not understand? Surely, had I sent thee unto them, they would have hearkened unto me. So now, if we didn't go unto the strange nation, which is the white man, or the Chinese man, or the Uhara's man, you'd have listened. You'd have listened. And this laws in the Bible is not for you. But you'd have listened. Come on. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. But you so-called black, you're Hispanic and you're native, you don't want to answer. You don't want to listen what's coming out. Every promise is in the Bible is for you. You so-called black and you Hispanic and you native, man. Come on. For they will not hearken unto me. What? For they will not hearken unto me. Because you don't want to get corrected. You don't want to keep God lost. Can I bring something to you, my brother? Can I ask you a question, man? Can I ask you a question, man? Can I put a bicycle on the side, man? Yeah, man, put a bicycle on the side, man. Because I, I, I see. Come on, put it right here. Put it right here. I don't want to ask you some question. Because God never sent us out here to no people of no strange language, man. God sent us out to you, so called black. Can you know black? You're the Israelite, what the Bible speaks about, man. So now, my brother. What's your name, my brother? Greg. Greg, all right. My name is Barnabas, man. Well, listen up. Right? I come to the Bible, right? Do you believe that Christ come in the flesh? Or you believe he come from immaculate conception? So now, we're going to correct that right now. Give me that John 4. First John 4. We're going to correct that right now. So if anybody tell you that the true Christ, not that white Caucasian image, can in Christ, that Caesar Borgia, Alexander Rome, the sixth son, that's not Christ. Get that out of your mind. He's a child molester. Infest with his sister. I'm just telling you what's it. He's a homosexual too. You understand that? We're going to show you what the real Christ look like. I'm going to tell you that Christ ain't coming. What God said, he ain't coming from no immaculate conception. Come on, read it. 
Give me that. Revelation 1. First, we're going to show you how Christ looked like first, and then we're going to tell you, we're going to show you in the Bible that Christ comes from a man and a woman. Come on. Revelation 1, verse 1. Right. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Christ looking like. Uh -huh. Now I want you to take plus first it? No. blackness, white it's package, and put out of your mind. Because this is the people who enslave us and destroy us day by day. Come on. This, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So God give this unto who? To him. To show unto his servant. God give it unto the angel to come and show it unto the servant. Come on, keep reading. <laughs> and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So now, John, John is a servant of God. John speak the last book, which is the revealing, the revealing of our true black Messiah. Come on. Who be a record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So when, in the system, when you be a record, what you do with the record, what you bear in the system right now? You put it up. That's what John do. John lock it in the Bible for us to come. Come on. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And John was and testifying about Jesus Christ. Not jump up in the church and the glory hallelujah and talking about, oh, I was in, in my bed and I couldn't move and God. No, that's a lie. God said he don't answer sinner. That's what John 9 verse 31 said, man. Don't answer you. Talk, come on. And of all things that he saw. So now we're going to show you what John saw. John see everything about this black king, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Because Jesus means Savior. And Christ means anointing. He's the anointed one. Come on. Verse 10. I want you to show him. I want you to show this man today because he want to know. Because it's all lies in the four corners of the earth. And the lies were set up into earth as men. You so called black, you spanky naked, man. Come on. Yeah. Verse 14. Come on, man. His head and his ears were white like wool. So the, the Christ, the real Christ, what John see. You see a man with white hair. And a holy, who have holy age today. Look at this man right here. These are the people who have holy hair, brother. That's all the real Christ. John, John the Revelator gonna tell you from the head down to the foot. Come on. The white man don't have no kind of hair like that. He have hair of the dead, man. All these people have the body of the dead, man. That's what God said. If you're not an Israelite, you are what? You are a dog. And you are of the dead. That's what God said. Because the life, the Lord, what God gave us, that gave us life forever. God never gave the laws unto the other nation. We give Moses to give to the children of Israel, which is you. Come on. His head and his ears were white like wool, so as white as snow. And his ears, which is the beard, was white like wool. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So now we're going to the eyes. Because why his eyes like a flame of fire? He's not talking about the black part of his eye or on the white. Because the first miracle he make, he create under the face of the earth, he turn what? Water into what? Into wine. Come on. Guy, he was a wine bibber, he matted and called him a wine bibber. Come on. And his feet, like unto fine bread. So now we got him to the feet. So if the head stay the same way, and he got him to the feet, or the feet supposed to The same way, come on. And his feet, like unto fine bread, as if they burn in the furnace. Anything what you put in a furnace, in fire, you put a white paper, what are you going to make? That's it. He telling you what he saw. He never hide it. He writes in the book, but we don't read. We don't want to read the Bible. God we said the Bible ain't true. That's what we said. God, God, just because you read the Bible and you read the Bible, God said, love your enemy. And then he go back and tell him, no, 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 hate your enemy. The enemy, what he's telling you about to love is the enemy of your people. Give me that deliver because let me show you God said you must love. When God said you must hate and love, if you don't know the Bible, how to read it, precept, must keep on precept, line upon line. You're going to believe the Bible is a fairy tale book and put it one side. No, this is, this book going to run the earth forever. Not just now, come on. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So now, God said you must not hate these people. Do not hate. But who we, who we love today? We love the white man, the Arab man. These are the people we hate, and these are the people who destroy us, brother. With food, with the medical system, with all these things. Why, the, why when the plane fly, he don't fly over the rich wood. 
you fly in the Hispanic or the black community? Why you fly over there? Because a few more coming out of it hurting us day by day. That's why we have to be at King King's County. And when the hospital, don't your name again? All hospitals we have booked it. Every hospital is here, brother, looking for what help. And when they give us the medication, they give us bad medication. Because when you get the medication, you have to look at the bottle. The small writing, if you look at that, you want to take that pill, brother. <laughs> The small writing saying, you're taking off your own risk. You're taking off, bring yourself down to death. But we don't read. Come on. Water. Are you getting sick and sick every day? Every week you have to be into the dash. You ever wonder why? Because God could put a curse upon us, bro. too fast when you get on it. You look good. That's why they give you a paper to sign. You give a side effect, brother. Look on the fine writing. That's the thing. We're going to bring it up. Come on. Bring the Bible up. Come on. Leviticus 19, verse 17. We're going to show you who you feel love. And stop shooting your brother. Stop shooting the Hispanic man. Stop shooting the native man. And stop shooting the so-called black. I'm not talking about the African. Because the African is not your people. God said it, not me saying it. I'm going to bring it out too. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So God said you must not hate your brother in your heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So now we, we ought to rebuking you. Correcting you. Rebuke me to correct you. Today is a Sabbath day. We're telling you to have a beard. We're telling you to have fringes around the body of your clothes. The, white, the church ain't telling you this. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor yes. and not suffer a sin upon him. That's what you out here doing, brother. When you're in sin, we're going to correct you. God said, do not make sin upon you, brother. We must love you. What is love? Come on. Let us see what is love. Because we're out here with Because I grow up. <laughs> it's when I've been 40 years old, I know what is God to. I never know. Huh? What chapter you just read? Leviticus 19, verse 17. Leviticus 19, verse 17. 17, 17. 17 I'm sorry. So now, we are out here to suffer no sin upon you, out here to correct you. Because if we don't do it, we're going to get charged for it. We're going to hold a thought for your life. That's what you're here to your Come on. 2 John 6. Right. And this is love. From I was growing up, and I always ask my mother and my father, what is love, man? They never tell me, man. They always tell me love and can't explain son. Love is to care and share. Lies. That emotion, man. Let us see what love. The pastor ain't going to tell you neither. Never. And the pastor read the Bible every day, right? Come on, let me see what love. And this is love. From this is love. Come on. That we walk. After his commandments! If you ain't walking after God, come on, you can't tell me about no love, brother. That's what we ought to tell you, brother. Let me see what is the love of God now. Because we always said we love God. Lying children. That's what God said. You lies. Let me see how to love God, man. First John 5, verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God. We want to know what is the love of God. That's what we ought to tell you. What is the love of God? No, come on. That we keep his commandments. So if you if you talk talking about you love God and you're keeping his commandment, we we, we wanna see. Jump over to two verse three now. You tell him about you love God. He's a liar. That's what God said. Come on. And hereby do we know that we know him. So now if you said you know God, come on. If we keep his commandments. So the only way you know God if you're keeping God's commandments. Come on. He that saith I know him. So he that said that Christ and God is a spirit. He don't come from no sperm's line. Hear what God said. Come on. And keepeth not his commandments. And you tell the people in the church that God commandment don't away with. Hear what God said. Is a liar. God says he's a liar. All these pastors in the church are liars. They are pimps, man. Because the spirit is like, woo. No, that's a lie. Show me what is God's spirit, man. God said, beloved, believe not. Every spirit, don't believe these churches. These are garbage. Come on, we'll see what is the spirit. John 6, verse 63. Come on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. So quicken it means to change. When you know the word, I know it too. You're going to change, brother. They're going to see it working on the Sabbath. You're going to know that this is God's Sabbath. No work, no cooking, no buying. And it, no selling. Come on. Come on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. So it is the spirit that quickeneth that change you. Come on. The flesh profiteth nothing. So the flesh, sin, profit nothing. Sin is comfortable. Sin is relaxing. Burning weed, calling hoes, bitches. That's profit nothing. Come on. 
the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So you know what is the spirit now, right? The word, which is the word in the Bible. These are the spirit of God. No jumping up and getting get in a glassalalia. The spirit of God gets in a glass the name. Glassalalia. That's the spirit of the devil himself. Come on. First John 4, verse 2. Come on. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. So now we know the spirit of God. That's why we're teaching it. The Bible is the true spirit of God. Not no Korean, not the book of the dead. Come on. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So if you tell the people that yes, Christ come in the flesh, like we're telling you now that Christ, I'm a biological father and a mother. We have God. That's what God said. But here are the people who tell you that Christ don't come from that. Come on, keep reading. And every spirit and every <laughs> man, this person in the church who said that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And now what are you gonna do? Your kids want going to church. Stop them quick. Tell them don't go to church on Sunday. Because church Sunday is the first day of the week. Sunday the first day of the week. They told it. The church they told you this was Christ. Go back to Revelation. No, no, no. I don't go back to Revelation. No, no, no. Go over to uh, Revelation one and go back to uh, record. One and one. All right, thanks, guys. Revelation one, verse one. two. Who be a record? He said, John the Revelator, the man who walked with Christ. He was one of the twelve disciples. He was in the island of Patmos at this time, like a jail, like Rikers Island. They banished him for teaching the word of God. He said he be a record. He had to record. The word record means what? To record. He had to record how Christ looked. Why? Because these last days, he knew this was going to come out. He knew, and he's in the spirit of Christ. He knew that they was going to bring this out. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians 11 and 3. They was going to bring this out. And that's why he recorded it. But we can know in these last days how out. Heavenly Father, look, I mean, how Christ look like. That Christ is the image of the Heavenly Father. Christ said, you see me, you see the Father. Yeah, yeah. That's what he read it, he black. You see his feet was black like it burned in the furnace. So your feet black, what color your face? Black. Second Corinthians 11 verse 4. And this is what they did. They played a demonic trick on us and put this up there when we came out of slavery. That's why his name is the image of the beast. Because we didn't worship him. Go ahead, go ahead, right here. You see right here? Let me show you. Go ahead and read that. If we didn't worship him, you see how he made us? And this was a... Uh, uh, read read Second Corinthians 11 verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. No, verse 3. Verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent begun Eve. So he's Paul and the Spirit said, you got, we, we said, read that again. But I fear. He fear. Because he knew in the Spirit that it was going to come out with another Jesus. There's only one Christ. There's only one Messiah. There's only one Savior that came to us that named Jesus the Christ. The Howard Shah, whatever you want to call him. There was only one, Emmanuel. Whatever you want to call him, there was only one that came. But now in the last days, he knew they was going to put this up. He, they came up with this with the, um, this thing called a conoclasm. When they took all our images, our black images, they painted them in white. St. John, St. Peter, Moses, all the, you seen the Bible picture on TV, all, all these pictures that come on, the Ten Commandments, they painted white, but they really all black. That was called a conoclasm, because they knew the image. If you knew that God was black, you know how much power, you know how much people would really follow him? So they take that away from us from slavery, we, we can follow them. But we can worship them. That's why his name is the image of the beast. Go ahead. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent the God eat. Now he explaining, I fear, unless you get tricked and fooled about following this God. In the last days, or you get tricked, because churches tell us this is Christ. And that's a man that walked the earth, who killed people, murdered people, had a baby by his own sister. He was a homosexual. He lay with Leonardo da Vinci. That's who. This is real sketches that Leonardo da Vinci was sketching to make this guy. Right, Caesar Borgia, a real man. And Michael Angelo, he was having sex with them dudes. He was a homosexual with this guy here. 
and they put him up as being Jesus Christ. Pope Alexander VI's son, the, one of the Pope's son, Pope Alexander VI, Cesar of Borgia, right? As the serpent beguiled Eve. That the serpent tricked Eve in the garden? Do and the serpent, And the serpent told Eve, listen, he told he gonna give her the fruit. He never said apple, he said he, he gave her fruit. The fruit he gave her was doctrines and philosophy. And she went back and took that back to her husband. And Adam went for it, that's why Christ came down and said, yo, what's going on? Because she got tricked and she broke it to her husband. He said, unless you get tricked by this picture right here. That's what he's saying, read again from the top. Of the but I fear. Everybody, they was made from the dust of the ground. What color is dirt? Brown and people go to dark as get. That's, that's how the Adam was made of the dust of the ground. Go ahead. But I fear. You read that in Genesis 2 verse 7. 2 verse 7. Adam was made of the dust of the ground. So he was black and like you got this one say he's the black knight. Look at this brother, he's light brown. You got brothers that's dark and lighter, you know what I mean? The deeper you go, the blacker you get. Read that again where he can get the fullness. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, through him being slight and deceitful, go ahead. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So your mind will be corrupted by the simple things in Christ. Christ was the black man with white woolly hair. Who the hell is this man right here with dead hair, damn blue eyes? Who the hell is this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why he said right there, read that bottom part, by the simplicity, the simple things in Christ. We know Christ is a black man. Because the scriptures say he was a black man like he burnt in the furnace. We got this, you know where we get this from, this image? You get robbed right now, you go to the priest and what would they ask you? They say, how would they look? They're going to ask you for the description. You want to say he was black, big nose, no lips? Yeah, he had woolly hair, is white, he had beard and mustache. That's how he looked, and they're going to draw that picture up. That's how we get, we ain't saying that's Christ himself. But that's the, the description in the Bible that give you, you know what I mean? So the images, we always had images, brother. But that's why he said we, that we won't get tricked. So your mind should be corrupted from you the- always said your minds be corrupted, because this is corrupt people. This corrupt people, this make you think that you, everybody's equal, God love everybody. God don't say that in the Bible. He, this brother gonna get into it, go ahead. This tell you that you can do whatever you want. You ain't gotta keep God Lord. That's what this image tell you. You can be a homo. That's what the image telling you right here. Listen, everybody, can, you can do what you wanna do. That's a lie. God set a rules and regulations for these 12 tribes of Israel, his children. Go ahead. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity. The simple things. That is in Christ. That is in Christ, that way he looked. His color, the way he looked, who he came for. What was the purpose of being here? Go ahead. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. And this is verse four. He said, if he, if another man come preaching another, what? And if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. He came, the white man came and preached another Jesus. He ain't preaching true Christ. He know what color Christ is. Our people don't know what color Christ is. So white men know Christ is black. You know how many times have we ran into people that come from the Middle East and Russia and known places and they see this image, they say, who is this? Oh, where I live at, Christ is a black man. So what is this right here? Because they know it, but we don't know it because our minds been corrupted through slavery. Do we think we got freedom? We think we know without reading, like he said earlier, without reading, our people don't read and study and find out what was in our past? Who are we? And all of this history is right here in the Bible. Go ahead. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. Because we never preached this guy right here. We never preached him. We only preached the true Messiah. Excuse me, can I ask you something, right? But if the truth is in the Bible, then, right? Yes. Uh, so I was, I was like, the preachers, them, they should know the truth. Then. They know. They do. That's what he was telling you. They in the church telling you lies. You know why? Money, money. They're like the Pharisees of old. They want position. They want money. They come in with their gators and they find suit. They want you to worship them. Because people always say, my pastor said, my pastor told me, my bishop told me. They don't never say what the Bible told them. They always say what they did. Pastor told them he was a liar. You ask him like he said, you ask the preacher what is love, you know what he gonna tell you? Just have faith. Love is just love everybody. He ain't telling you the truth, like he just read what is love. What is love he just read to you? 
You remember? Nah, do you go back on that? It was keeping of the commandments. Read that again. That's the law. Second John no, 6. First John. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I said it looked like yep. First John 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. They tell you this is the love of God. Everybody say love, but this is the real love of God. Go ahead. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not too hard for us to keep. Because people always say, God do this for me. God do that for me. I say, what do you do for God? And they get quiet. What do you do for God? God do all this stuff for you. But what do you do for him? He said, just keep his commandments. They can't do that. So that's why he read they're a liar. That's why he just read through that and read that to you, bro. The only thing they saying out here, they be lying. Right. He church people was calling me because of this. The image of the beast, they worshiping this, and that's why their minds are going from the truth that's in this Bible. That's why they're going for that. In that, um, what is that, Corinthians 11? Nah, the Bible taught you a lot. God taught you. Who taught him a lot? God. God taught you a lot. For he that cometh preaches another Jesus. Because somebody was going to come, they, that's what they did, came. Why the white Chinese don't preach another Jesus? Why the Africans don't preach another Jesus? Why the them, uh, 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 East Indians, the Arabs, why they don't preach another Jesus? The white man, the only one that kind of mess your mind up by talking you soft and yeah, yeah, brother, you know, just have faith. No, they just want to talk to you like a man, like God talk, like Christ talk. Christ talk with authority. He ain't talk like no weakling like they be showing on the TV because come to me. It didn't sound like that. Go ahead. Which ye have not received or another. Now, now we, we never received that soft spirit, uh, feminine spirit. We always been men. We always going to be men. We always going to stand up here and talk and fight for our people. The ones who want to learn like you. The ones who want to learn when thermal nuclear bombs come hit this place, they're going to be wiped out. Because the Bible said that. That Bible is about what? History? Future prophecies. Right. But this Bible is about our history and what's going to happen in the future for us. It's from the Israelites, for the Israelites, to the Israelites, this whole Bible. But they ain't going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Or another gospel. Or another what? Another gospel. Another good news. That's why the church ain't teaching you the real good news. They teaching you another good news. They ain't teaching you what the Bible saying. Go ahead. Which he have not accepted. We ain't never accept that garbage day where he talk us. We go to the churches on Sunday battling them. You know what? They never stop and talk to us. Maybe one or two will stop out of a damn thousand people in the church. Only one or two might stop. No one, there's no one no one to stop. And we dealing with the Bible. We ain't coming out of no other book. We dealing with the same book they deal with. Go ahead. Ye might well bear with them. He said you him. might as well go with him. If you're going to believe this, if you're going to believe this garbage, believe by this garbage, go with that garbage. That's what God said. Mm -hmm. So now, the brother speak well. The brother speak well because if the brother never studied, he couldn't come here to here and bring this word out to you. Because we all have to keep our focus to the book. Because 400 years, they stop us from reading this book. Why? Because it's our lies. They have to keep us down to, to put the lies that yeah. is take effect upon the face of the earth. That's what they do. Right? So now, in the church, the good news when they speak in the church, they tell them must come as your heart. And when they come, you're going to get rich. That didn't write in the Bible. Give me that. What God said, they don't get rich, fall into the temptation. Give me that. Give me, give me that. Give me that in Timothy. I'm going to show you something. Give me that in Timothy. Come on. So when you go to church and have the mindset about rich, that's lie. We're going to show you what God said. Come on. First, first Timothy, chapter 6, verse 9. No, read from, read from 5 down. Verse 5. Yeah. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds. So and when you hear those things from the pastor's mom, that's we have a corrupt mind. The corrupt mind, what do you have? To rob you. To take your collection and your tithes. God never said a tithe in the Bible. If you don't know what tithe means, tithe is crops, orange, vegetables, that's tithe. Animal, that's tithe. Come on. And destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is Godliness. What the pastor said to you, he trying to build that spirit in you that you believe that gain is godly. No, gain ain't no godly. Come on. From such withdraw thyself. What is that? From such withdraw thyself. When you hear that, withdraw yourself. God in Matthew, he tell you we always gonna have the poor amongst us, brother. In Matthew said that Matthew six verse something up. We always gonna have the poor amongst us. Come on, keep reading. Verse 6. But godliness. Let me see what is godliness. If gain and godliness.
godliness to see what godliness. Come on. But godliness with contentment is great gain. With godliness with content, like what we're doing it, we don't care about no riches. We care about the promises and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law, what God gave unto us. We start to put more emphasis on it. I know that the whole kingdom belongs to us if we keep this unto the end. That's what God said, come on. For we brought nothing into this world. So when you're born, you come out naked. You can bring nothing. That's what God said, come on. And it is certain we can carry nothing And when you die, look, look on Michael Jackson. What do you carry with him? When you have millions, God's certain you ain't gonna carry nothing with you, come on. And having food and raiment, let us fear with be content. Get work. Get nine to five. Have food and pay your rent. Be content with that. Be comfortable with that. But when you're talking about rich, you're what God said. Come on. But they that will be rich, they who want to have planes and cars and space circles, fall into temptation tempt and a snare. They fall into temptation. Who want to get rich? Fall into temptation. I'm going to show you. Come on. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. I'm going to show you what foolish and hurtful lusts. Give me Romans 1. When you have money, leave what you fall into. Romans 1 verse 25. No. When you have money, a lot. God said you're going to fall into temptation. Yep. Right. Come on. Yeah. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? So who changed the truth of God into a lie? This man, the old race of this man, That's turned right. the truth of God into a lie. And then the pastor started to push it to the church. And who? He ain't pushed on the white man or the Chinese man. Because the Chinese and the white man ain't going to the church and it's to the garbage. What they put is to destroy me and you. You native. You native Indian. And you so called Hispanic. And you know Hispanic. So You're from the tribe of Hifram. Come on. And worship. Is our tribe, right? Yeah. Come and on. serve the creature more than the creator. What? And worship. Who turned the truth of God into a lie? White man. Come on. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. He's the creature. He's the serpent. He's the one who deceived us. He's the one who carried us over here. Save the power ship, right? He's the one who put chains and tackles on us. He's the one who kill us. He's the one who put us on the tree and hang us. Come on. Who is blessed forever? Who is blessed forever? Come on, read on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. They that are rich have money. God gave them up to vile affection. You know what the vile affection is? Come on. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Stop. What is a woman's natural nature, brother? The natural nature for a woman to have kids, right? Now you see two women. They change. Who do it? These people, brother. A man can live with the next man, and a woman can live with the next woman. That never been taught on the face of the earth. God, God said it in, in the Bible. When you read, Leviticus 2013, the more and more I say, if a man lay with a man, can so surely put to death. That's right. So how we see a man now start to marry to a next man? And a woman start to marry to a next woman? Yeah. Huh? Be strong in the Lord. In the power of God. His might. His might. His might. His might. His might. His might. Everybody, listen up. Tonight's class is going to be uh, another proactive lesson. Very proactive. Some of y'all might be nervous and afraid, but it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. There's a movement against Israel to try to shut the nation of Israel down and or, yeah, that's the movement. But guess what? They shall fail. Everyone that comes against the word of the Most High shall fail. Because the, the Most High said his word shall stand forever. Believe that. His word shall come to pass. He said, all his counsel, it shall stand. We're going to open up with Daniel chapter 7. 
They have a lot of uh, non-believers out there, Negroes. See, the white man ain't gonna come up against us until we crush all these Negro philosophies. And that's what's going to happen. The most is gonna make this thing speed up. And these Negro philosophies, Latino philosophies, they gonna either get rolled over or fall in line. They only got those two choices. Joining Israel. Joining Israel. Hmm. <laughs> that sounded like a simple class. Okay. <laughs>